Hi guys, Mikey from Nana Clubhouse here, hoping you've had a great Anzac weekend and you're all keeping safe. Um, once again, I figured you guys might like to have access to some tools to work on music whilst we're all keeping safe at home. Uh, today I want to talk to you today about um, vocal sessions and Reaper and what you can do to enhance a vocal recording. Uh, this might be something that you've recorded yourself, or it could be something that you've downloaded, uh, like an acapella, or even something that somebody somebody else has recorded and shared with you. Um, so I'll be showing you some parts of my process by breaking down how I've treated Beezer's vocal performance on the Looperman collab that we've been working on. So this might be relevant uh, for you guys if you've been working with somebody else um, online, or um, re recorded something for yourself. You know, every situation is different though, and um, sometimes not all of what I show you will be relevant to your uh, your case and your, your song, um, but this is just kind of an introduction really, and um, you can explore these techniques uh, later in detail, um, and you know, I'll be around Clubhouse and we can talk about them. Um, but these basics are, really, are a really good start um, to get you up and running anyway. Uh, so I'll just swap over to this mode. Yep, yeah, cool. Um, all right, so I've got Reaper open here, and it's got our vocal session open um, over here. And this is the one that um, I've kind of had a bit of a mix on, and I'm you know getting into the ballpark with it. Um, and also I've got the Looperman beat here um, that doesn't have any vocal treatment on it at all. In fact, it doesn't even even have the vocals in it. Um, so I'm going to import uh, some of the vocals into into this one and go through my process, well, a part of my process with you guys so you can see what it is. And um, yeah. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do um, is open up... Um, my looper man um, stems so stems are just uh, the files the, the individual um, isolated tracks so here they are these are the ones that Beezer sent me through through to me so I'm just going to select them all by clicking and shift and uh, then clicking at the end like pretty sure you guys know how to do that um, and just literally dragging them into uh, my um uh my project um okay so it's going to ask you if you want them on separate tracks or on a single track obviously we want single track so we're just going to click on that and i'm just going to click on them and drag them all over to the left because uh, that's how Beezus um set them up and you can see there they've got we've got uh to what looks like to be full tracks, so that's probably the backing track that you sent through. Um, uh, doubles, there's a double there. Um, not too sure what that track is, doesn't appear to have anything on it. Another doubles, more doubles down here, um, and what looks to be uh, some ad libs. Uh, another track, it doesn't seem to have anything on it. Um, and then there, I'm pretty sure from memory that that's the main vocal, and it looks pretty compressed and booty, so I'd say that that's our vocal. And from memory, I think those ones are um, Pepper's uh, BVs, um, and that's the sample track there. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of those tracks that uh, don't have anything on them, and they might have been tracks that Bees wasn't happy with what he... Oh. Control Z. Oh, got everything selected. Um, so I'll just select that one track and press delete. And it's going to get rid of it once I press yes. And same deal up here. Cool. So that's great. Okay. Um, so now I've got everything in. Um, and I, I guess what the first thing I should do is probably label those things so I don't lose what they are and I don't forget what they are. Um, so I'm going to get rid of these ones too because I've got, I've already got the beat. So get rid of those two. Um, and that one there is a double. So I'm going to call it a double. 
Um, right, so to recap, uh, that's all labelled and everything's sorted out now, um, so I'm not going to lose track of what they are. Um, and the next thing I want to do is go through the individual tracks and clean them up a bit. So um, by cleaning up, I mean removing all of the silence, silences, uh, the breaths, the background noises, and if necessary, moving parts slightly to get the um, vocals to line up perfectly and that's really important um, often in really percussive uh, rhythmic styles like hip-hop and um, yeah but you know it applies equally to basically everything um, now it is really handy that Reaper's got some really good tools uh, that you can use to do all of this stuff with um, and we'll start with the main vocal because it's the most important one so um, so you'll notice that most of these tracks are silence and the silence is really important because you know um, it gives you a place to go from from the left hand side you know it, you know it tells me where the, those uh, um, tracks sit in relation to all of the other instruments right um, but we don't want them in there because there'll be little background noises and that sort of stuff in there as well so um, we're going to use a tool called the dynamic split tool um, to clean up the silence. So to do that, um, we'll just select any old, uh, sorry, the main uh, vocal, and I'll just put it up right at the top. So I'm just going to select it and press D on the keyboard. It doesn't matter if you're on a Mac or on a Windows machine, same quick key. Um, this opens up the dynamic split items box. Um, and we want to make sure at transients is not ticked, but those two are ticked. Um, and the, uh, so the gate opening and closing is ticked, sorry. Um, and the remove silent areas box is ticked down here. And we want this drop down box to be split selected items, not any of the other ones. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so the last thing to set up is the threshold sl slider, and um, uh, so f for me it's defaulted to negative 40 or around there, um, and yours is probably close to around there. If it's not at that point, just drag it down there because that's probably a really good place to start. Um, and the value should, around negative 40 or negative 39 or something like that should work for you. Um, but you might need to change it. Um, if your vocal is really quiet, because a reaper will accidentally think that silence and it will delete it, right? So um, you can see that the part of the track that has vocal content in it, in it is white, um, and the silence, well, what reaper has detected as silence is gray. So you can kind of get really good uh, feedback about um, what it thinks the silence and and not just by having play around with a threshold and it'll it'll show you right so we'll go back to where we, we were or roughly around there um yeah so that's what you're aiming to do is um set this up so it detects where the silence is and then you just hit split and you're good to go and it'll automatically get rid of uh, all of that and once you've set it up once you can just go through all of your tracks hit D, and then hit enter or return, and it'll just go through them automatically and get rid of all your silence, and that's just pretty dope. D, return, D, return, D, return. So it's pretty, oops, not S, D. Um, pretty basic, and actually you can do it all at once. You select all by uh, right clicking and dragging, press D, boom, so yeah, so that's how you can get rid of uh, your silences automatically. Um, now the next, the next really cool thing that I'm going to show you, oh, mic's dro drooping a little, here we go, this, the next thing I'm going to show you guys is, um, is actually a really 
awesome thing. Um, it's how to use stretch markers. Um, they're a really powerful tool in, within Reaper and they allow us to move parts of our, our recording around without changing the pitch or messing it up too bad. Um, the idea is pretty simple. You just assign markers in your audio region and then you move them around just by clicking and dragging and I'll show you I'll show you now what I mean. Um, so I'm not going to mess with the the main uh, vocal here. I'm, I'm, I'll zoom in on use uh, and do these guys. So how I, I like to work is, um, and I think it's a really good idea, is to set, um, set it up. Uh, oh, actually, first of all, I'll um, elaborate. You have to have these, whatever region that you're working on selected in, and um, that you do that just by clicking on it, obviously, um, just like all of our other edits. Um, and so I'm going to click on both of them and just set up a couple of um, uh, stretch markers at the start and at the end. So I'll do that by holding down Shift and hitting W. And that, you'll see those two little diamonds come up. So those are our stretch markers. And I'm going to do that at the end too. And that just stops things if you've got a really long track with other stuff on it you don't have to do it all the time it's just for me I, I like to get into that habit of doing it because it stops your audio moving around a little bit now I'm going to do them one at a time and all you do really all you have to do is kind of eyeball the um, if you're doing what I'm doing which is like lining up things that is just a little bit out of sync um, it's pretty like uh, yeah, it's pretty easy. You just find, you eyeball the actual waveform, like the start of the waveform, and you put in a, a stretch marker by Shift W, and I'll do that at all of the starts of the phrases or notes. Um, I'll do it down this one as well, just because. So this is all just clicking and Shift W, and now once I've done that, I'll go to the end of the phrase and do another shift w and it's pretty much it's as simple really as uh dragging them over you know um so i'll just click on that sec this one here and drag it click on this one and drag it to where i want this one probably come back a little here uh, this one come back a little bit this one wants to come forward uh, this one also wants to come forward and those two are already in line so you can see I've lined everything up so I'll just solo all three of those things and let's have a listen we make moves like that there you go it's all perfectly in sync now um, so that's one of the things that you can do with um, doubles and ad libs that are, are supporting a main vocal you want everything to be sounding tight and um yeah it can really tighten up your vocal performance heaps actually um and the other benefit is that it makes your um your not only does it make your delivery cleaner but it makes the lyric easier to hear which is really important i mean not just in hip-hop but every style basically you know now I almost never do this on a main vocal um, because it will change the way that it's phrased but it's totally fair game to do this on backing vocals and that sort of thing that are supporting something else. Um, yeah, so for in this instance I only really did it on the backing vocal and ad-libs because I wanted them to be punchy and support the, the main vocal and have it all clean and tight. <clears throat> okay, so uh, one last clean cleanup job that I'm going to do before I move on is to um, <clears throat> solo the main vocal and um, and then remove all the breaths and this is sort of sounds like a weird thing to do but it's actually um, yeah it's really important um, it's kind of a te tedious job um, and there's no way of automating this as as far as I know in Reaper but it's totally worth doing because it, it just makes the vocal sound way slicker um, so I won't do it for the whole track because obviously it's going to take ages but I'll, I'll just walk you, walk, walk you through the first bit of it so I'm just going to solo the main vocal so that's all I hear and then um, by holding 
clicking on the little S on that track. Um, we make moves like that, like Mao. So you can hear Bees took a breath here, and it's pretty much just making a cut by pressing S, and then rolling that back to the previous um, word. And you can, I mean, yeah, I've I've been doing this a little while, so I can just sort of see it. But you know, with it soloed like this, you can really hear where the um, the breaths are. And moves like that, like Maui slowing down. So with the with it soloed like that, it sounds kind of disjointed and weird, but I can I can guarantee you once the tracks in there or the beat and everything is in there, you will it it'll sound better. Um, with the breaths out, it just makes it sound a little bit more slick and a bit more produced. So you want to spend your time going through the main vocal. Maui slowing down the song, we cool like that. Make a move. Yep, there's another one there. Cut. I'll drag it back and then I'll put a little fade on the end of it so it doesn't sound too wonky and weird. Making moves worldwide, yeah, while you're sleeping out back. I'm putting. There we go, there's another one. And you get the idea. You just want to go through your whole track basically and do that. So you'll see if I go over to uh, the vocal. Um, where is it? Here's our main vocal here. And you can see I've work, worked my way through the whole thing and just cut out all the breaths. And that's really what you got to do if you want your, your main vocal to sound slick. That's one of the steps to it. you just got to cut out um, all of those breaths. But hey, you know, there's always exceptions to this rule, rule as well. If you're doing like a singer-songwriter type thing, you know, you're like a folky, you're singing and playing a guitar or, or you know, keyboard or whatever, and like you want a really breathy vocal and something that's really intimate, that can be really nice. So you can leave the breaths in. So, um, you know, it's this isn't a always do this thing it's just this is what i did for the song um yeah okay so the next step is kind of not really even related to um uh, <laughs> what it sounds like but i think it's a good practice to get into anyway so i've already um and it's an organizational one um yeah so i've cleaned up the vocal tracks of taken out um identified what they are and but now what i want to do is kind of um uh just color code them and and put them into uh, what's known as uh, buses and this will help me um work with them when i'm easing them into the mix and i'm, I'm putting them into the mix and it's a pretty easy process to do um so I'm going to color the tracks so they are in groups or buses, um, and they're what uh, these submixes. Um, we, oh, let me start that again. These groups are all going to become my vocal buses, and these vocal buses are submixes that feed directly into the other into the main mix. And I kind of need to um, have them um, easily just workable and distinguishable. So I'm just going to. Um, do that by creating a, a track um, and then feeding all of my say all my doubles into that track so I'll show you how to do that now um, the way that I do it is I just create a new track immediately above the um, group that I want to create and press uh, control T this is probably a little bit like confusing for you at the moment but it'll make sense when you see what I'm up to um, I'll unmute the main and then I'm going to select, say, that one is the last one of our doubles. And I'm going to select the first one of our doubles and hold down shift and left click. And so now I've selected all of them. You can see they're all turned, uh, yep, they're all selected. Now I'm going to click and drag and see that little blue line. And it you can see that it's like a full blue line on that one and then a half on there. Well, what, actually what I want to do is drag it up to where um, that thing that says left and you can see that it's become like a, uh, a slightly shorter blue line. That's what I'm uh, trying to achieve and I'm going to let go there. And you can see that now that um, all of these ones that say double are coming off this, this other track here and what I've, I've created there is a folder what Reaper calls a folder, but most people call a, a subgroup or a bus. So I'm going to call this a uh, the double bus. <laughs> Catchy name, eh? 
Um, and now what's going to happen is all of these tracks are going to go through this bus um, to the main mix. So it means that I can mix the thing really easily just by moving one fader. So I'm just being a little bit lazy. and But it's a really handy way of uh, mixing. Um, but just to distinguish it from the rest of the tracks, I'm just going to um, give it a different colour. So I'm going to select the bus and all of the other um, tracks inside it. Um, just as usual by holding down shift and left clicking on the last one or the one furthest away from the one that I initially clicked. Um, and then right clicking and uh, checking out track colour and we'll make it, let's make it red. So now all of those tracks are red and I can easily see what bus they belong to. Um, and you can do the same thing with, um, you know, uh, so I'm going to do this one here. It's Peppers Bus. So I'll call it Peppers Bus. Um, and then select, select, drag in, drop, select, select, right click. Uh, and then we'll make that one, oh, say green. Cool. So that's how that works. Um, yeah. So now I've cleaned up my vocal tracks, identified what they are, and sorted them into submixes. And now it's time to apply a little bit of compression. Um, okay, so compression is really important for vocals. Um, and it, as a, as a basic kind of uh, introduction, um, it evens out the loudest and quietest parts of um, a musical phrase or a vocal um, and this is really important for singers especially because um, singers can both be quite dynamic like you know there's a, a big difference between the quietest note and the loudest note um, in a, a singer's song often or a rapper um, but also they do this they move on and off the mic heaps so that you can kind of get this huge variability in volume and tone and character. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it changes a lot if you move, you know? So, and most singers, like good singers know how to use this effect to their own ends. Um, uh, and it's really cool that they can do that, but compressors are a way that when you're working with a song and somebody's moved a little bit and they've changed the sound a little bit you can um, throw a compressor on there and it'll even everything out so you definitely want to make friends with a compressor um, if you're into making music on a computer it's there's so many great compressors available and there's some great ones built into reaper so um yeah so really uh, um yeah it's a huge topic really but We'll, we'll just look at the basics today. Now usually I use a plugin called TDR Nova for compression um, and EQ um, and it's an awesome free plugin. I'm totally a fanboy for it but it doesn't come as stock with the Reaper and installing it would make this video too long so I'll just use the stock plugins in Reaper um, to do a similar job. We'll have a quick look at it later on though um, so you can see wh what it is and why it's so cool. Um, I can hear that Bees has already done quite a bit of compression on this main vocal. So, and actually you can see it, you know, the, the waveform is just like physically bigger than these other ones. Um, so, I'm going to leave the main vocal alone for now and focus on the doubles and ad libs. Um, and yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, we have our first doubles down here. So, I'll just go there. Um, so when you're setting up um, compression um, on a track, it's um, a compression compression is uh, an effect and like any effect, you can put it on a track just by going over to where it says FX um, on the track and clicking on that. You'll get a, um, oops, it's opened up I'm here. I'll just pull it down. It's, um, you'll get a um, FX browser um, that opens up and uh, down the bottom here you've got a sort of what it calls a filter but I, I think of it as a search bar um, and 
you can search through all of your different plugins. And now I've got heaps of plugins, probably more than you'll have on your system because I've been collecting them for a little while. But Reaper comes with heaps as well. And um, you, um, I'll only use stuff that comes with Reaper. So um, type into your search bar comp and you'll get all your compressors. Um, well, some of them. Some of them are named other things, but um, I want to I want to focus on this one here, which is the Rhea Comp, and it's uh, the sort of vanilla compressor that comes with uh, Reaper, and it's actually a really cool unit. Um, yeah, it's sort of yeah, it's actually really really amazing for for what it is. So now we can see that that light has gone green, and the Rhea Comp is on our effects rack, and there's the controls for it. Um, so the first thing I want to do when I'm setting a comp up a compressor, um, well, there's a couple of things actually, but the thing that I usually do is set the ratio, uh, for an appropriate thing. And when you're doing vocals, um, you want to set it somewhere between two and four. And, you know, I kind of, you know, I usually end up setting the ratio here at about three. Um, so... Don't worry about too much about um, the, yeah, don't worry too much about what that means. It just, it uh, yeah, hit me up about it at Clubhouse and we can have a bit more of an in-depth uh, in dis uh, discussion about it. Otherwise, if you're interested, there's heaps of content on the internet about it. Um, yeah, but... That's what I do. And then the next thing I do is I'm going to set the threshold um, so that it's um, taking about ne uh, three, three to five dB of um, gain reduction on this meter over here. And you'll see what I mean in a second when I play it. Okay, so I'll just play it back and set the threshold. Here we go. We make moves like that. Like Maui slowing down the sun, we cool like that. Making moves worldwide. Oh, I didn't quite get it, so. We make moves like that. Like Maui slowing down the sun, we cool like that. Making moves world. Cool. Yep. All right. So I've set the threshold about where I want it. It's um, somewhere between, you know, 2 and 5 dB, depending on the size of the peak. Um, and that's so that's cutting the tops off the uh, phrases, which is cool. Now... The last part of setting up a compressor is you want to add um, gain so that lifts the bottom, like the lowest parts of your um, of the dynamic up. So this is where the compression side of it comes. You know, you're you're um, you're taking away, you're cutting the tops off it and pushing up the bottom. So you're compressing, com you know, the top and the bottom. You're pressing the whole thing, compressing it, and then moving the whole thing up. That's um, that's how compressors work, basically. Um, so I'm going to give it about five, a healthy amount of gain. We make moves like that, like Maui slowing down the... Cool. So now you can hear that um, double that's, that was sort of way more in the background has really popped forward. So that's what compressors do. They kind of like, um, yeah, they, they push things. Often they can be used to push things to the front of the mix. Um, and uh, just make them more stable and solid. Yeah, compressors are great, man. You want to want to make friends with your compressors. Um, okay, so that's a quick overview of how much compression I'll use. So you know, not a lot, really. Sort of three to five dB. Um, I don't really like to use much more compression than that. Um, however, I often what I'll do is I'll and compress each individual track and then as I've set up here um, I've got buses and often I'll, I'll put uh, bus compression as well so that's where things get a little bit more compressed and um, and I, th I really think that bus compression works really well to glue things together and make them more cohesive so um, then yeah so that's kind of like a second uh, level of compression that I do but you know, I haven't, I don't think of, oh, I'm not too sure. I don't know if I've done any, done any bus compression. Uh, oh, yes, I have, yep. Need some bus compression there. Okay. Um, yeah, all right. So let's move on to EQ, which um, is actually a really important for most vocal recordings. 
again, it's a, it's like a huge topic and definitely every recording will benefit from a different EQ approach. Um, however, I do usually focus on a couple of problem areas when treating vocals, um, especially vocals kind of have like a, I have like a go-to thing that um, works for a lot of things and I just sort of like change that to suit the, the situation. Um, so if we go back to the track that we compressed, and I'll solo it up. Um, we'll add some uh, some EQ to it as well, and um, see how that kind of sweetens things up. Um, so to do that, again, I'm just going to click on the effects button, and now I'm going to go uh, right click on the space here in the effects rack, and click on uh, Add and Fix. And I'm going to search for EQ. Again, I've got a bunch of EQs here, but I'm going to focus on our um, basic re-EQ um, uh, effect that comes with Reaper. And click on OK. And oh, um, and here we go. There's our, our um, EQ effect there. Actually, I might just make it a little bit smaller so I can actually see behind it. Uh, I'll queue up just before it and let's see. One of the great things about this EQ is that it's got a spectrum analyzer built into it. So what that means is you can see the frequencies uh, that are in the track. So that's really handy for us when we're sorting out problems. We make moves like that, like Maui slowing down the sun, we cool like that. Okay, cool. So on the left here is all our bass frequencies. In the middle is our mids, funny, funnily enough. And on the right is all our trebles. Okay, and you can see that... We make moves like that. Like Maui slowing down the sun, we cool like that. Yeah, cool, man. So it's got quite a lot of... Like, there's a, a lot of sub and bass. Um, and we should deal to that. Because uh, that's that's a common problem area with vocals. Um, and that can kind of mess up our mix quite a, a bit by having all of that stuff. You won't actually hear it in the mix. It's just sort of cluttering up the bottom end. So what we're going to try and do um, first is get rid of that. Um, so I'm going to click on our one, which is our first filter, change it from a low shelf uh, to a high pass. And you can see that the filter curve is just going down. It means it's cutting everything off below um, uh, 100 hertz at a, at a curve. Um, so I'm just going to change the bandwidth a little bit so to make that curve a little bit sharper and move that up in frequency so that it's sort of a little bit higher. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to do. Um, and then I'm going to move on to our second band of EQ. Um, and I'm going to change that from a band to a low shelf. And I'm going to decrease the bandwidth and decrease the gain. Maybe I need to, yeah, okay, I might decrease the bandwidth even more so it's less than uh, an octave, maybe about half an octave. Jeepers. Um, and I'm just going to bring up the gain to, oh, yeah, no, maybe that's a little bit savage. Bring up. Bring up the frequency, sorry. Uh, maybe let's try it there and see what we... We make moves like that. Like Maui slowing down the sun, we cool like that. Okay, maybe bring it down a little bit. So it's sort of sitting around the 400s or, uh, or something like that. And that's, what that's doing is sort of getting rid of a lot of the low mids, um, which I've personally found to be kind of low mids and, and high bass kind of problem areas and vocals often so um, that probably might be a little bit savage of a cut but if you have it listen to it in context of the track we make moves like that oh, I should just get rid of the main vocal so you can hear it uh, we make moves like that like Maui slowing down the sun we cool like we make moves like that like Maui slowing down the sun we cool like that Oh, what am I doing? I need those ones. Duh. 
We make moves like that. Like Maui slowing down to something cool like that. Cool. So, um, yeah, we've sort of tamed that bottom end quite successfully. But I just want to add a little bit of... a add some mids back to um, to make it pop out a little bit more because now it's sort of sitting back in the mix a bit and I don't want that. Um, so the most of the interesting frequencies for uh, for vocals are sort of in this area here, a sort of 1 to 2K um, area. So what I'm going to do is just put a broad boost in those areas and that, I do that just by sliding the gain up and leaving it in band and uh, sliding it up and I probably won't boost too much maybe only 3 dB or so um, let's have a listen we make moves like that like Maui slowing down to something cool like right and instantly you've got it just pops out a little bit more and um, you know you can hear what the lyric is um, so that's the benefit of applying that EQ is that it sort of it cleans things up a little bit and makes yeah it just help along with the compression it just makes things um, more um, audible in, in terms of the lyrics and just makes everything sort of sit easily into the mix a bit better um, yeah so I guess that's the basics of how I um, treat a uh, a vocal and reaper. I mean, we've talked about cleaning things. Um, we've talked about um, compression. Um, we've talked about um, oh, and moving things around. Sorry, as well. Um, we talked about EQ. Um, and there's heaps more that you can do to treat a vocal and reaper. Um, like you can apply heaps of different effects, like um, saturation, auto tune formant shifting, detuning, chorus, transient work, and you know, the list goes on really, but I guess there's a this is a really good foundation um what I've shown you so far um for uh for some tools that will help you uh get a vocal into the into uh, a mix quite well. Um before I finish up today though, I do want to quickly show you what TDR Nova looks like and why I think it's so cool. Um, so I've got it over here on on all my... I th have I got it? No, I don't have it on, on that bus, but I know I've got it on the main. And okay, so this is it here. This is what it looks like. Um, it's a dynamic equalizer, which means it basically can, form, can perform the functions of both an EQ and a compressor, and it's totally a blessing for working on vocals. Um, and you can kind of see I've got a, a similar kind of curve on the mids here uh, for the EQ side of things um, to that that stock EQ plugin that we were just working with um, uh, in the other project. Um, but just watch what happens when I begin playback though. So, um, uh, right, cool. That's so you can see that I've, I've set it up to that it's going to, um, compress the bass, uh, frequencies. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, and this EQ, um, curve is reacting as, as the bass frequencies go over that threshold that I've set up down here. This is a really cool feature because uh, not only does it mean you can do uh, this, you can do like essentially the work of two plugins in one plugin, um, but the compressor only affects the bass frequencies um, in, in Nova, okay? So um, if you set it up on the bass that is, which is it's really cool um, because it yields a much more musical and transparent kind of compression on your track um, which I love um, and yeah it just sounds I, th I personally think it sounds better um, and it kind of doesn't affect the compression doesn't affect the mids and the top end in the same way that using a separate compressor and EQ does so I definitely recommend um, yeah, looking at that once we've um yeah but it's a that's a whole topic getting that into your into reaper so we'll leave that one there for today um 
but yeah, hopefully um, you've gotten something out of checking out my um, my a little bit of my process for working with vocal tracks and um, making them pop a little bit and making them a little bit slicker. Um, you know, uh, there's obviously way more to it, but I just wanted to keep it short today and cover a few different things rather than go into into heaps of depth on just one or two things. So yeah, cool. Um, thanks for uh, watching and um, uh, yeah, until the next video, I hope you all stay safe and look after each other. Um, yeah, bye for now.